This is Dolany TV, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another edition of Edmonton Oilers discussion here on the channel on this fine Thanksgiving Sunday in the middle of October. Ladies and gentlemen, we're still undefeated as it sits. A clean sweep of the New York area teams, everyone except Buffalo, might I add. But uh, yeah, you know what? Solid so far, a 5-0 and start, and we're looking good. But there is one drawback that a couple of you have mentioned to what's going on here with the Edmonton Oilers to begin this NHL season. And if you're a lot like me, what you're looking for early is to look completely different from 2018-2019. Well, in one category of uh, hockey, the Edmonton Oilers still are kind of looking like that 18-19 team. And that, of course, is the bottom six depth scoring. Because you look at who has goals. We have one, two, three, four, five, six guys who have scored goals for us early in this NHL season. Actually, seven, because we do have one down here with just one point. But that's it. We only have seven guys out of our, well, we've iced, what, um, do the math here, 12, 14 forwards so far this season. And we only have, well, out of those guys, five guys up front have scored goals. And then out of the six defensemen, two guys have scored goals. So that's an interesting thing to note for sure for this Oilers team to begin the year and let's just maybe explain for a second who these guys with goals are. Connor McDavid has four goals, Leon Dreisaitl has four goals, James Neal has seven, Oscar Kleffbaum has one, Zach Kazian with three, Darnell Nurse with one, and Joachim Nygaard with another. So out of those names there, yes, two of them are defensemen, the other, well, four are top six forwards. I know, well, if you want to debate the whole Zach Kazian situation, he's not a top six forward, but he plays as a top six forward. If you want to debate that, sure. But the only one, technically speaking, that spent most of his time through five games in the bottom six would be Joachim Nygaard. So that is maybe to the point a little bit concerning to start the year, but... Considering you're 5-0 and to start the year, is it really that much of a concern? Yes, no, maybe so, because you got to look at how uh, how sustainable is having McDavid, Dreisaitl, and James Neal lead the way in the goal department and the point production department overall. Well, probably not that sustainable. But where you've got some help is, of course, from the D as well in Clefbaum and in Nurse, because if they're going to produce goals for you... You're going to be just dandy. We know that. You know what? Darnell Nurse, take him away from last year. We would be in a world of hurt. So the one thing we do have to look at is kind of how the bottom six shakes out in terms of points, right? Is Thomas Sherko's in the top six, but he's more, I guess you could say, slated as that bottom seven forward, right? He's the weakest link inside the top six right now. However, Thomas Sherko has two assists. To begin the year in four games so that's a good news there Gaetan Oss has an assist as well but that's literally it you've got uh, obviously Ethan Bear with an assist as well Matt Benning with two assists but that's the D and guys that's a whole separate conversation in how the Oilers get screwed in the turn of a season if they're not careful D scoring is essential and we've gotten enough of that so far we have four defensemen out of our seven that have played that have had points that's you know what fine and dandy by me I just wish Joel Pearson would get a point but uh, it'll come with time right and obviously we'd like to see Chris Russell produce because as a guy who harps on the offensive side of production for Chris Russell's contract being stupid well you know what if it's gonna pay off you better get some point production with him so hopefully with time Chris Russell's contract comes around this season and uh, maybe doesn't burn us as bad if we can get some point production. Obviously, yes, the other side too is the goaltending has been fantastic and the defensive side of the puck's been fantastic. But let's get back to the bottom six here for a second because what you got to look at is how do you defend the exact same situation from last year when, okay, well, you're on a magical five-game winning streak to start the year. You'll come back to earth eventually. You're, you guys aren't doing that well. Like, lay off getting too excited kind of deal right well the thing is you look at the stats otherwise right for this Oilers team 
We have 21 goals for, which as I mentioned, pretty much all top six production, which is huge. We have two lines producing that top six production, plus a deadly power play. But we only have 13 goals against. So right there, you kind of look on the defensive side of the puck, the structure Dave Tippett's brought in, and you kind of almost have to sit here and realize that maybe the bottom six isn't scoring as much, but they're bringing that uh, structure to the game. They're bringing that presence that the bottom six on an Oilers team, when you're as top heavy as we are, has to bring. And that brings me to the next conversation before we get to the special teams aspects of this, is the simple fact that when it comes to the bottom six, you know what, they might not have as many goals as some of us might like through the first five games, but look at that Jujar Kara, Josh Archibald, Riley Sheehan line, or that Jujar Kara, Riley Sheehan, Patrick Russell line, whatever you want to throw out there. And whenever you have Jujar Kara and Riley Sheehan, okay, let's just go with that combination, on the ice, in the offensive zone, it don't matter if you're getting a goal or not. As long as they're not giving up goals, you are perfectly fine. And guys, yes, I understand Josh Archibald's bad turnover shot, whatever the heck that was last game, cost us a goal. And that's going to happen. That could happen to McDavid. That could happen to Drysaddle. That could happen to Nugent Hopkins. That could happen to anyone. So we don't have to worry so much about that as long as we win, right? Cover up the mistakes. As long as you cover them up, we'll be good. But with that said, that line, guys, absolutely dominated down low in the middle of the zone, grinding away, getting pucks on sticks, and getting pucks funneled towards the net. It was huge. It was huge to see for this Oilers team. When you look at it too, so let me just get the shots column here because let's go down, 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 down. And Jujar Kerr has got five shots through five games. That's huge, right? you got Riley Sheehan who's got four shots through four games. And then you've got Josh Archibald who has a shot in one game, but you consider how good he looked outside of turning over that puck on the shot pass, goal, whatever the heck it was, well, you know what? It's been okay for them. And now this is where you have to get to the penalty kill conversation because obviously the majority of our penalty killers are in the bottom six this year, right? Marcus Granlin, you've got Riley Sheehan, you've seen Jujar Carroll out there as much, and you've also seen a guy in the top six, Ryan Nugent Hopkins, spending some time on the penalty kill this year. Dry settled to an extent, but usually he's take a face off, go off the ice. And I think we've also seen Gaetan Oss out there as well. So you're through five games. And guys, last year, the penalty kill was the 30th worst in the league, sub 80%. Well, through five games, we have a 94.1% penalty kill percentage. So yes, the bottom six may not be producing goals. That's fine. You know what? We've got one goal through five games out of the bottom six. Maybe it's time to hit the panic button and try to figure out how we get goal production. Maybe. Or you look at the fact that given through five games, we've given up 13 goals against. So you do the math there, right? 13 goals against through five games. That's a 2.6 goals against per game average. Well, with an Oilers team pacing to score four goals, if you score 3.5 goals per game throughout the whole season, guys, that's playoffs. That's without a doubt playoffs. At 3.5 and 2.6, that is playoffs without a doubt. Of course, that becomes the question, is it sustainable, all that? 100%, I get it. But at this point, when you're not getting that production, but you're getting the production on the defensive side of the puck, mostly thanks in part, or thanks fully, in, in essence to the system and the stability that Dave Tippett has brought in and the stability Ken Holland has brought in with these bottom six players that are role players straight up, do a job, get the job done, turn it over to the top of the lineup. Guys, we have seen fantastic results. And it's almost as if a bottom six not scoring killed us last year, whereas the bottom six not scoring is in essence, helping us this year, right? We're working hard on the puck. We're staying steady defensively. We're getting the puck up ice and we're playing in the offensive zone with our bottom two lines. And all that does is wear down the opponent for Drysaddle, McDavid, Nuge, Neal, 
Kazian, and Yurko to go out there and absolutely dominate the opponents. And so far, that's how it's gone. Now, as I said, the question is, is it sustainable? But guys, without a doubt, I don't think we have any reason to be as concerned about the lack of defensive or lack, lack of bottom six scoring as we did last year to begin the year. So far, the returns are good. Is it covered up by a five-game winning streak, or is it covered up by the fact that they have been so efficient on the defensive side of the puck? Guys, you let me know in the comments section down below. I'm interested to hear this one, because I've presented enough angles on this, right? Obviously, you've got the angle that goes about the defensive scoring, right? We've got two defensemen who are point per game right now, so how much does that cover things up? You let me know in the comments section down below, guys. I'm Tyson, this is Stolen TV. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. I will catch you in the next one.